and welcome back to my channel, the place for parents who want to get the best from their little one's sleep. This episode is all about crying and I'm going to be answering the question, is crying harmful? So I have loads to share with you in this episode. Stick around, we are going to delve on in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try and answer this question. Is crying harmful? In a word, no. Crying in and of itself as an act of a thing that we do, crying itself is not harmful. It can actually be helpful. It causes a release of feel-good hormones, which can actually help, which is why when you know how we sometimes say, oh, just have a good cry and let it out. We also have a whole movie genre dedicated to crying, you know, the tearjerker. There's a reason why, and crying can actually be helpful in many ways. But rest assured, when your little one cries, when your baby cries, the crying itself isn't harmful to your child. It's actually communication. And really, in infancy, that's what crying is used for. In adulthood, it's more of an emotional thing, but in childhood, for babies especially, they use it to communicate. They don't have words, and so they cry to tell you that they want or need something. And that's pretty much the main use of crying in babies. Of course, they will also cry because they have pain. Pain causes crying. They will also cry if they are scared. They might also cry if um, they're cross or angry. They're, it's always gonna be an emotion and there will be something triggering that, that they, they want or need something. And you, the cry is to tell you about it. So we can feel all those things without crying, but a baby needs to tell you about it because they don't know how to fix it. They don't know how to make the pain go away, so they cry. You have a pinprick or something, um, I don't know, you stub your finger on a rose thorn and you don't cry because you don't need to tell someone about it. Or you could with words, that you're okay. When um, a, a toddler pricks their finger on a rose thorn, they're gonna cry because they don't know how to make that pain go away and they need someone else to do it for them because it's all too much for them and they don't understand. Ah! So they cry to tell you about it. It's all communication in some form or another. Okay, so the other things I really wanna share, and there's there are lots of studies and there are lots of inconclusive elements to this. So. I'll share what I can share with you to date, but studies have actually shown that crying does not release toxins. Crying itself does not release toxins. Toxins and stresses come from other emotions, sure, and they can come with or without crying, but crying itself is not a cause of toxins to be released. There's not an adverse stress response just because of crying, and there's no long-term effects um, that have been found on attachment or bond with parents or on child, a child's emotions or behavior just because they have done a lot of crying. So it's not the crying itself. Now, some of those things can come about because of other factors. There can be um, stresses involved. A child who's been through a really traumatic experience perhaps had certain levels of abandonment go on in their life, um, all kinds of situations can cause stresses and cortisol levels to rise and reactions that can last, but not crying, stand alone, just crying. Crying is not the harmful thing in this mix, okay? The thing that I really wanna to share to help you is to understand why. If you know why the cry, then you've got the key. So we've talked about different reasons babies cry. Com communication is the main encompassing one, but you do have pain, hunger, tiredness, anger, frustration, uh, just sheer dissatisfaction, fear. And sometimes these um, cries will show up differently. For instance, um, angry cry, you often see like slanty eyes and like disengagement. You can, um, pain cries often have scrunched up eyes, like a real pain. Fear often has wide eyes. Can Sometimes it can come on suddenly if it's like a sudden fear, like I don't know, a big loud noise. A big loud noise scares the little one. You'll see there's almost like a huh? There's almost a pause, there's a shock. 
and then there's an outburst. That could be a fear, um, a fear cry. They're different, right? And you'll get to know them. And this is the beauty of being a parent, is getting familiar with what your little one's cries mean. And that's literally like the code. If you can crack that code, then you're gonna have a much better way to respond to the cry. And responding, and this is the third thing I wanted to share with you really today, is that responding is parenting. That is actually what it is. We talk all the time about sleep training and a responsive approach, meaning as long as you're responding, it's safe and it's fine. It, the only area of sleep training, which I don't even think is sleep training because it's just ign ignorance and abandonment, is ignorance and abandonment. And if you're going to just um, ignore and do nothing, then yes, you're treading on the territories of abandon abandonment and leaving a little one to feel that kind of sense of fear or abandonment. That, that could have long-term effects, sure but just crying alone isn't um, gonna have those kinds of effects. And responding, as long as you are responding, AKA parenting, then your little one's gonna be fine. What that looks like is unique to everybody. And I think it's, it is so unique that you cannot judge from one person's choice of response to another because you don't know all the ins and outs. You don't know what the best response is for that child, the backstory, the history, the why, or for the parent. And so the right response for the right child is going to be completely unique. So if one parent finds that actually I need to dash in quickly because that, and it works for them, that's them, that's fine. If another parent says, oh, my child does so much better if I just give them a minute, let them have a little chance to soothe, and then I go, go to them and I reassure, but then I give them a bit of space. For some children, that is more effective. It's how their personality is. And unless you understand all the components of that entire family and that entire child and that entire situation, then who is anybody to judge? So responding is parenting. Parenting is what we do to lovingly bring up our children in the most safe and healthy way. I hope this episode has been helpful in trying to kind of thrash out some of those myths, misconceptions, misunderstandings about crying and understand it a little bit better so that we can do our very best as parents to bring up healthy, happy children. Coming up in my next episode, I'm going to be talking about how um, when you know your little one's cries, you can trust yourself and let's identify some of those cries in a bit more detail. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.